In today's video, we will explore the width, height, and size utilities in Tailwind CSS. These concepts are simple even for beginners. However, you might learn something new or refresh your knowledge. Starting with width, Tailwind provides a series of fixed width utilities ranging from width 0 to width 96. Each Tailwind unit equals 4 pixels. So width 2 gives a width of 8 pixels, width 4 provides 16 pixels and so on. These units allow us to set an element's width easily. If you need a specific custom width that isn't available by default, you can specify an arbitrary value in square brackets. Like width hyphen in square brackets, you can define the value you want. It can be pixel, RAM or others as well. Elwind also supports fractional widths such as width 1 by 2, width 1 by 3 and up to width 11 by 12. This allows us to divide an element into 12 parts, assigning proportional widths to its children without manually calculating pixel values. Let's see an example now. So here inside the body, let's create a div. I just made this body a flex container and then just added the text white, nothing else. So for the div, let me just give a background color and save it. Now you can see the div element is occupying exact width that it needs that is fitting the content. Now you can specify the width for this element by using w hyphen and you can see all the values that Tailwind provides. I'll use uh, 28 and save it. And now you can see that the element width is 28 units this is the fixed width and as i said if you want a custom value that is not provided by telvin by default you can just add square brackets and then mention the number of pixels you want maybe i want 120 pixels i'll save it the difference is not much let me make this 240 so you can see the difference easily as you can see on the left the width is increased now so this is how we set the custom values and to demonstrate the fractional width that is the width 1 by 2 1 by 3 these things let me add another div i'll just duplicate this i'll remove the 240 pixels for the first one i'll use 1 by 3 and second one i will use 2 by 3 so in the total of three parts First element is occupying one third and the second element is occupying two thirds. So I'll remove the flex call here so they will be side by side and change the background of this. I'll use a uh, blue. Now you can see that the orange element is occupying one third of the total width and the blue element is occupying two thirds of the element. This 1 by 3 and 2 by 3 always depends on the width of its parent. Now, since it is the parent is body, it has full width. But if we add another parent here and set its width to maybe width 64, now this 1 by 3 and 2 by 3 is calculated based on the width 64. Let's save this. And this is not flex container so that's why they are on top and bottom let me add a flex now you can see that it is not occupying the full width it is only taking the width of this parent that is 64 units and based on that 64 it is calculating the one third and two thirds like this you can assign until 12 parts for example you want one part to go for the first element and 12 parts 11 parts to go for the second element you can do this as well like this there are also minimum and maximum width options for instance if you want an element to maintain a specific minimum width but allow it to expand based on the content you can use the minimum width utility on the other hand if you want an element to shrink with content but never exceed a certain width you can use the max width utility so I'll just remove this parent and then remove the fractional width and add text call again to the body. 
for the first element i'll use the minimum width i'll use 36 and for the second element i'll use the max width 36 and save it now you can see that the first element we are using minimum width 36 the orange element so what we are telling here is at any point of time the minimum width of this orange element should be 36 means it can go beyond 36 but it should never come below 36 even the content does not require it now width does not require this much space but still because of minimum width it has 36 units of width so if you add more content inside save it you can see that the background expanded means the width expanded because we are setting only minimum width 36 but it can go beyond 36 i'll just remove the extra content i added now on the other hand maximum width is exactly opposite means it can go maximum till 36 units but it will not exceed 36 so if you add more content and save it you can see that the width did not increase it just came to the next line because the maximum width is 36 so that's the difference between the minimum and maximum width utility the same principles apply to height utilities as well you can use fixed fractional minimum and maximum values to control an element's height in the same way as with width i'll remove the minimum width and maximum width and just use height now so if you want to set a specific height you can use height i'll maybe use 24 and you can see that particular element has height 24 now and if for this if you use height 2 by 3 for example you can see that the height is two-thirds of the entire height this body has height of full screen so it's taking two-thirds of the screen in the same way you can use minimum height and maximum height as well just as we used minimum width and maximum width so it's not uh, any different there are also other utilities related to width and height however the ones covered in this video are sufficient for getting started you can always check the official documentation to explore more utilities if you are curious now let's talk about the size utility often you will want a perfect square for an element while you could set the width and height to the same values a better option is to use the size utility for example for the first element instead of setting height 24 and then width 24 you can just set size 24 for the second element i'll remove the extra content for this i'll use size 24 and it's the same output so instead of using two utilities you can just use one utility that's all for this video in the next video we will dive into the margins in tailwind css see you there